Well, good morning, everybody. It's a great Sunday morning here at the end of March, our last Sunday in March, and here we are doing this online again. So I hope you've been um, getting used to our new format now with the churches being closed, and uh, we're just going to continue to do it this way for as long as we need to. Of course, the church isn't closed. Church buildings are closed, but we're here, and uh, we're glad you're joining us. Church family, welcome you this morning, and all those from other places who may be joining us as well, we're really glad you're with us. Why don't we hear from God's Word as we begin today? Really good uh, encouragement from the book of Isaiah. This is what Isaiah said. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let's begin with some prayer. Father, we thank you on this Sunday that we can gather again in your name all around uh, the world, possibly, but we're gathered in your name to hear God's word, to worship you, to draw near to you. We do want to seek you while you may be found, and you may be found today, so we thank you for that. Father, speak to our hearts with the word of God today. Encourage us. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us. You promise not to leave us or forsake us. We have that promise even during these challenging and uncertain times. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a few announcements to bring your way. You don't want to bore you too much on that. For our church family, some of you have been asking about our offering. So remember, you can mail your offering in with a check. You can drop it off here at the church uh, Tuesdays between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You can drop it off. Uh, we also have a PayPal button on our website, which you can use. We have our um, automatic withdrawal system, too. Um, trying to work on a few other ways to get uh, your offering in. We're thankful for that. Those of you who are watching from other churches, please support your pastor and your church wherever you are. Remember that expenses for the church do go on even during the pandemic, so it's very important that you continue your giving. We thank you for that. God bless you for that. A few other little announcements here. Uh, the following week, next week here, is going to be a Palm Sunday. Uh, it's the first Sunday of the month. We are going to be celebrating communion. So I want to encourage you now, maybe make a note to yourself that we're going to um, have elements ready. So if you can have some elements ready at your home, some grape juice, some, uh, some bread or crackers, and have that set aside, and then we'll be having that right near, near the end of our service next week. Also, we're going to have a Good Friday service. So it'll be the same time, 1045 a.m. on Good Friday, uh, and we'll also have communion at that time too. Okay, we're also working on some special things for Resurrection Sunday. More on that maybe next week. Um, make sure you have your Bible and a pen and a notepad, or if you use a, a, a you know a computer for that, that's great. Uh, you might want to jot some notes down, of course, for our service today. I want to give you some other verses to look on. Remember, this is Sunday, and it's great to have uh, some spiritual food on a Sunday to get your week started, but you need some other nourishment during the rest of the week. So I want to give you some other verses. You can jot these down, and they'll likely be on the screen for you as well, um, eventually, or they'll be, they'll be written down anyway. So uh, just a few from the book of Isaiah today that are just really good, good verses, I think, that'll be an encouragement to you this week as we continue on. Listen to what uh, Isaiah said here in Isaiah 40, uh, verse 28 to 31. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall not walk and not faint. So that's a great promise to us, that God, he doesn't get tired. He doesn't get, you know... Um, in a panic, like some people in our world, maybe even struggling with that this week, get those verses into your spirit. Read those and reread those verses. Wait upon the Lord. Trust in Him. I'll give you another one here from Isaiah. Isaiah 41, verse 10, and then also verse 13. Wow, these are great, great promises here. 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then a few verses later, in verse 13, Isaiah continues, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. We're going to hear in our message today about a man who needed the right hand of God to help him in his time of trouble. 
and God will help you with his right hand in your time of trouble too. Get those verses down, read them and reread them. One more I'll give you here. Isaiah 43, very applicable during this pandemic time, uh, situation we find ourselves in in the world today. Listen to what, what promise God gave his people there in Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Those are good verses. We should really spend some time reading those. Hey, why don't we take a little break now and um, spend some time worshiping God. we got some music for you.
I want us to pray now. Uh, so many things to be considering uh, as people are facing this pandemic in our communities. Oh my goodness, in our homes, people are, are you know sequestered in their homes because of the isolation situation. Uh, let's be praying for those on the front lines, people in retail who are being affected by this adversely with their businesses, uh, our governments who are trying to give leadership. These are all things we should be praying about on a regular basis. And I, I wanna give some time to that right now. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, bring these before our great God. None of these things are a surprise to him. None of these things have caught him off guard uh, or are too much for him. Our great God can handle these things. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just give you thanks that you are a God who is near and not a God who is far away. You do hear and answer our prayers. Father, our world is in turmoil due to this pandemic and other issues in our world too that are in some ways being masked by the pandemic and so they're not at the forefront. But God, we know there's many things that we need help from you. And we thank you that uh, you can intervene for us and you care about your people and you care about what we're going through. Father, we lift up those on the front lines right now, those who are in hospitals, uh, medical offices, doctors, nurses, um, technicians, people who are um, hunkering down. Uh, many of the reports we hear are that uh, there could be a, a big wave coming and they want to be prepared for it. Help our medical people, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom that you've given them to uh, deal with this situation. But Lord, it's going to be something that's going to tax their strength. It's going to tax their patience, uh, even their will. Lord, would you supernaturally minister to those in these medical situations, these hospitals and, and uh, clinics where they're doing testing and, and all these areas. Father, would you just be so abundantly available to them, as it says in Psalm 46, that you're abundantly available to us in a time of trouble. Father, we think of our governments, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his cabinet, uh, our leadership in Ontario with uh, our Premier Doug Ford and uh, our mayors and uh, councillors in our municipal areas. Um, we just thank you so much for each one. Lord, we pray for those in governing authorities who are dealing with this, fielding questions, trying to lead, do what's right for our communities to protect uh, our people. Father, give them supernatural wisdom from on high that they make the right decisions. Lord, we know that people are going to complain about this, that, and the other thing. Um, but Father, we know that this is an important position and we're to adhere to governing authorities, as the scripture says in, in Romans chapter 13. So Father, we do submit to that. We pray for uh, health and strength for these leaders and also wisdom to guide and to lead. Father, we think of those who've been adversely affected in our retail sector, all these businesses that have closed that are not essential and uh, had to lay off employees, all these people are affected, many, many people affected by this. We thank you for our government's program to try to address this, but we do pray for people, particularly here in the short term, who are feeling the pinch of this, trying to uh, budget so they can get groceries. And, and uh, we ask, Lord, that you bless those in our retail areas, those who've been affected by these layoffs that you help them financially and provide for them. We think of people in our grocery stores where they've been dealing with the hoarding and, and the panic uh, and buying and this type of thing, help them to be safe as well, Lord, as, as most of the traffic uh, that's out there is happening in these places. So protect those who are in our uh, grocery stores and uh, other people that are in essential public services, God, protect them from this virus as well. Lord, protect children and the elderly those in long-term care facilities. Thank you for those who are uh, looking after those in our long-term care facilities, Lord, that they are patient with these people, helping them uh, for those who are dealing with fear, Lord, to be able to um, speak words of comfort and assurance to them. Lord, every aspect of our society, we're, we're needing you. We can't do this on our own. We can't beat this, this virus. We're praying for scientists and research people who are looking into a vaccine. We're praying for those who are uh, trying to address this from that very molecular level, uh, help them with that. But Lord, may we know that it is from God and God alone that the solution to this pandemic will come. And so Lord, we throw ourselves the mercy of God. We recognize it is you and you alone who will bring breakthrough in this area. Father, I also pray that we would not be idle during this time, that we wouldn't just hunker down and and uh, wait till the storm blows over. Lord, we need to go through the storm. You promised to take hold of us, uh, take hold of our, our hand by your righteous right hand. So Lord, although there is uh, difficult days ahead, Lord, we know we can get through them because 
of the hand of Almighty God being with us to guide us and being our rear guard. So help us to be in our Bibles and prayer. Help us to look to you, O oh God, and trust in you in all circumstances. Help us use our time not to just let it go idly by, but to spend time praying and seeking your face through the scriptures and, and encouraging others to do the same. Father, now as we get ready to hear a message from God's word that you have for us, teach us what you would have us to learn from this key passage in scripture. Help us to learn from the life of Peter and the lesson he learned when he was going through a difficult storm and how he knew that the Lord would be there for him. Father, bless our time in your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a message for you today from Matthew chapter 14. Matthew records a story about uh, the, the uh, apostles when they were uh, just come from feeding the 5,000. By the way, the, the, the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, um, you know, that was a major thing. Of course, it wasn't 5,000, it was 5,000 men. It was probably uh, closer to 20,000 or even more with women and children. And the, 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 the apostles were exhausted. You know, they, they, um, it was a very long and tiring day. And at the end of that, Jesus had said, well, we've got to get to the other side of the lake. And so, um, you know, life kind of had to go on. You know, and this is kind of how it is with us in our society, too, that that it's not like, OK, I can take a break now. No, there's there's one other thing. Some of you are at home. You've got small children. Of course, school's not in. And, you know, you got to be ready all the time if you've got little children or maybe you've got elderly parents to care for or other things, something to do with your job, working from home. Uh, it doesn't seem to end. And so there needs to be a continuum with our relationship with God in order to get through these these things. Um, Matthew chapter 14, if you have your Bible, you can turn there. We're going to start at verse 22, and we're going to go to the end of the chapter. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22. Here's what Matthew records for us. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. I'll tell you, there's a lot of lessons in this passage here. And I kind of, way, the way I want to do it is, we're just going to sort of go through and look at this passage and see the nuggets of uh, truth and things that we can glean for our own life, especially during this pandemic, but, but life in general, how we can trust in the Lord through difficult times. I want you to, to get this phrase don't lose your focus. I want you to think about that. Don't lose your focus. Have you ever had to do something where you were afraid, but you had to go and do it? It was some maybe some task, some job or something, some responsibility you had, and you, you were fearful of doing it, but you didn't really have much choice. You had to go through and do it. Has that ever happened to you? I remember a number of years ago when my children were younger, my, uh, the, the fair came to town. You know, with all the rides and everything, it was right adjacent to my house, and and they set up in a big parking lot there. And and my youngest boy, Michael, uh, he was always really little. He's bigger than me now, but but at the time he was little, and he really wanted to go on the Ferris wheel. 
And I thought, oh no, I don't want to go on the Ferris wheel. My idea of going on the Ferris wheel is I'm going to get there and that guy that's running the Ferris wheel is going to wait till you're at the top and it's going to be a windy day and then he's going to stop it and the wind's going to be blowing that your seat back and forth and, and you look down and oh my goodness, I thought that last place I wanted to be was on this Ferris wheel, particularly at the top. I was trying to find a way to get out of it, but my boy said, no, I really want to go on the Ferris wheel. Of course, he was too small to go on himself, so I just had to do it. So I just prayed. I remember walking with him to the to the place paid and we were going and we got on the ride and we're sitting there and he's starting to move us up there and I was just praying God please help me I'm feeling really fearful right now and you know sure enough um, the ride went I hung on um, my boy really enjoyed it uh, and near the end as he's letting people off of course wouldn't you know it we were at the top <laughs> the thing was swinging I thought Lord you're with me Sometimes we just need to know that God is with us in whatever situation we're going in, whatever causes us to have fear. But certainly in, in even greater situations, the storms of life, we're in one of those storms right now. This whole pandemic situation is definitely a storm that's sweeping through our world and it's hitting our communities right here in Canada and wherever you're watching from, it's touched every part of the, the earth unless you live in Antarctica. But other than that, it's touched everywhere else. Let's just break this passage down a little bit and see what we can learn from it. You know, verse 22, uh, they just finished feeding the 5,000. It was 5,000 men plus women and children. Tiring day, long. It's in, the, it's in the evening hours now. And Jesus gives some instructions. Verse 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. He has a plan here, guys. The feeding of the 5,000 is over. Next job, we got some people on the other side of the lake that need some ministry. So get in the boat. I'll dismiss the multitude. You get in the boat. I'll meet you over there. Okay, so Jesus gave some clear instructions. It says that he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Some of these disciples are seasoned fishermen. You know, Peter and his brother Andrew, James and John, they've been on the lake lots of times. They're very familiar with it. What they don't know here, and I believe Jesus, of course, did know, is that a storm was awaiting them on this lake that particular night. Now, they didn't know that. It's like, get in the boat, row to the other side. Yeah, we've done this a hundred times before. But Jesus knows that. They don't. He planned to join them on the other side, which is why he said, go over. It would be kind of a cruel thing, don't you think, if Jesus said, uh, go over to the other side. He... <laughs> You don't know, but you're going to be swamped. It's going to be the worst night of your life on this, on this boat. That would be awfully cruel of God to do that. Did Jesus know about this storm? Yes, he did. Did the disciples know there was a storm coming? No, not likely. Storms can come very suddenly on the Sea of Galilee. Just the way it's positioned between mountain ranges, the wind can dive down and stir up a, a storm very quickly. You can have very nice conditions and in a very short period of time, tempestuous conditions. And that's probably what happened on this particular night. We don't know what storms are ahead of us on our journey, but Jesus does. And he will help us get through safely to the other side. Now, we need to remember that. We don't even really know what's going to happen tomorrow. We could look at the news and some other thing is happening. You know, with this pandemic, it's, cha it's changing not only daily, it's changing hourly. We don't know all the storms that are ahead of us. Aren't you glad that we don't know what's down the road? My I think some of us would just stay in bed. We wouldn't want to get up and face the day. So, but God does know what those things are. And he will give us the ability to go through it because he will go through it with us. That's a key thing. What did Jesus do after he sent them on? He went on the mountain by himself to pray. There's a lesson there for us. We should be spending lots of time communing with our God. In those moments when you can snatch some time away, maybe early in the morning when you get up or you know, after the kids are in bed or uh, maybe after dinner, maybe around the dinner table after dinner is over with your family, just spend some moments or whatever. We need to spend some alone time in prayer. We need to spend lots of those alone times with God in prayer. Because when we do that, we're, we're connecting with God on a very intimate level. And our focus then, of course, is on God. So if you're praying, it'll be very hard for you to be watching the news. Uh, and by the way, don't multitask. Don't try to pray and watch the news at the same time. We should be focusing on God. Now, look at verses 26 and 27 here. 
And when the disciples saw him, so he'd come out in the fourth watch of the night, the Bible says. The boat was was out there in the middle of the sea. It was being tossed by the waves and because the, the wind was contrary. So now the storm's on them. You know, they're in this predicament. It's the fourth watch of the night, which is uh, between 3 and 6 a.m. It's the darkest hours of the night. You ever have to get up with your kids when they're sick? And they always seem to get sick between the hours of 3 and 6 in the morning. I don't know why that happens. But, you know, sometimes our darkest hour, you know, is right in the middle of the night. And you still got to waste before daylight. And it just seems like it's grim. And, and this is where their storm was hitting them. You know, sometimes in our life... Uh, we feel like we're getting hit below the belt uh, with, with some of these storms, these problems that we're facing. And kind of maybe that's where the the apostles were at this point. You know, they're thinking, oh, it can't get much worse. We still have several hours before daylight. This storm, the wind's blowing, there's water coming into our boat. How are we going to deal with this? And it was at that point that Jesus came to them on the water. Verse 26 and 27, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. I don't know if you notice that. Um, fear will skew our view of God. These are men that have been walking with Jesus. They know him quite well. He's very familiar to them. All of a sudden, when they're focused on the storm, they don't recognize him. They think he's a ghost. You know, fear will skew our understanding of who God is. We'll start conjuring all sorts of things that aren't true. And we got to be very, very careful about that. He should have appeared to them as one who could help them, which he was, but they didn't recognize it because of their fear. However, Peter is on a different level here. Remember, there's 12 of these men in the boat, the 12 apostles. Verse 28 and 29, Peter answered him. After, after Jesus said, it's I, you know, you know chill out, guys, it's, it's me, I, you know me. It's, it's I, don't be afraid. So that assuring word there, Peter receives that. And then he says in verse 28 and 29, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Peter stepped out in faith. After he knew it was the Lord, the storm's still swirling around and blowing and it's raining and it's, it's a terrible situation there. But now Peter is focused on Jesus. Jesus is having a conversation with Peter. And after he says, oh, it's you, Jesus. If it's you, Jesus, command me to come to you. And Jesus says, yeah, come. And so he's focused. He's looking at Jesus. He's not looking at the storm around him. He's not hearing what's going on in the boat. He's focused on Jesus. He gets up out of the boat and he does something that's absolutely impossible. The law of gravity is broken here. He gets out and walks on the water, making his way to Jesus. That's impossible. You know, gravity is 9.82 meters per second. Uh, Peter, I'm guessing, was a big man. He would have sunk like a stone. There's not a chance that he could have walked on water. It's impossible according to natural laws. But when he was focused on Jesus, Jesus suspended the natural and inserted the supernatural and allowed G Peter to walk on the water. Let me give you a statement here. When we step out in faith in the midst of our fear, we can do what we never thought possible. See, if, if our focus is on Jesus, we can do things we never thought we could ever do because Jesus is helping us. Our focus is on him. A lot of people say, oh, I could never get up and do public speaking. You know, I, I have a terrible fear of speaking in front of crowds. I did too. When I was in high school, we had to do uh, my grade 13 English class. We had to do these oral reports on, on poetry and other things. And, and so we had to do like, and there was a public speaking contest. And I thought, oh, I can't do this. I, I don't ever want to do this. I remember preparing for that and doing it in front of my class. I my, felt like my knees were knocking together in front of 25 students. And I thought, I just need to get through this and live to tell about it. And I will never, ever do this again. Of course, now I'm faster. Um, I do this for a living. Uh, it's amazing what we can do when our focus is on Jesus. He allows us to do things we never thought we could possibly do. Peter was able to walk on water. I like what John Ortberg uh, said in the title of his great book from a number of years ago. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. So that's a pretty good expression there. I like that. You know, Peter, he's not going to walk on the water if he stays in the boat. Remember, there was 12 men in that boat. 11 of them have said nothing. We don't hear from them at all at this point. What are they doing? 
I think they're cowering in fear. Maybe some of them were saying, Peter, are you crazy? Where are you going? You're going to sink. You don't even have a life preserver on. I don't know what they were saying. It doesn't record it for us there. And Matthew is the one that wrote this, this, this passage that we're reading from. And Matthew is one of the other 11 that was in the boat. So I wish he would have given us a little bit more information, but he, he doesn't. But I can just imagine what was going on there. They're probably protesting and telling them not to do it. Or maybe they weren't even concentrating. Maybe they're just worried about themselves and not falling overboard. I don't know. But Peter was the only one that stepped out in faith to get out of the boat. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. You know, this storm called COVID-19 is not going to just blow over overnight. We're in the midst of this thing, and it could get worse before it gets better. We need to step out of our comfort zone. We need to step out of what we've been relying on. And we need to focus our attention on Jesus and look at him. He is standing there in this storm. He's there calm, peaceful. He's walking on the water and he's calling us to come to him. We need to do that. Have you done that? Has that ever happened to you where you've had to just, um, you know, step out in your storm? I, I shared earlier uh, in this message about uh, my time with, with Michael on the Ferris wheel. I can remember too when I was in the first year, first or second year of university at University of Windsor. I was a biology student there and, and a friend of mine had challenged me to go with him knocking on dormitory doors to ask people if they wanted to talk about Jesus. Now, I'll be honest with you. When he asked me, I thought, I, I'd rather have a root canal. I mean, I, go knock on doors. What kind of reception are we going to get? Like, I, I thought people could be everything from just jeering us and shutting the door to being violent. I don't know. Furthermore, it was on Monday night, and it was going to cut into my Monday night football watching. But anyway... He really challenged me on this, and I was I was terrified, but I, I said, okay, I'll pray about it. And so I met with him for prayer, and I remember the very first door we had to knock on. I was so nervous about it. And we had these little surveys that we asked, you know, about students, uh, kind of a lead-in thing about what they were taking at university, and then asked them different questions, what they thought about life and eternal life and what they would do after they died. And, and it was interesting, some of the conversations we got into with some of these students. And yes, some of them did shut the door on our face. Some said we were lunatics and this type of thing. I'll be honest with you, I was, I was scared for most of the, those nights going out there, but God helped me through it. I want to tell you another story, too, about fear in the, in the middle of a storm. I read this in uh, Moody Magazine many years ago in the early 80s. There was a story about a woman who was in a choir. I think it was in the Chicago area. And um, she was going through a difficult time. I think she was a single mom, kids at home, just trying to make ends meet. Her job wasn't really paying the bills. She was struggling. She was down to her last 20 bucks. And uh, she was just so discouraged and fearful. But what, 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 you know, are they going to turn my heat off? Are they going to turn the electricity off? How am I going to feed my kids? Just about that time, it was choir practice night. And so she thought, well, I'm going to go to choir practice and maybe I'll just I'll do some singing and just really um, get with God's people and, and get my focus off this. So she went to choir practice that night. And the choir director said, you know, uh, before we begin tonight, I just want to make an announcement that it's come to my attention. Uh, someone that I know has, has got a real need, and I'd like to take up an offering from our choir members tonight. Just give what you can, and, and I'd like to be able to bring this offering to this person and help them through this difficult time. Well, this lady thought, oh, no. Oh, wow, I, I, I feel for them, but I'm down to my last 20 bucks. She had the $20 bill in her, in her purse, and she thought, oh, how can I do this? And so she was really struggling with whether she would do it or maybe explain to the choir director, I'd love to help out, but really I'm down on my last $20. But anyway, when it came time for the offering to be received, she said, Lord, you know, I'm just going to trust you. Someone else needs this and I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to put it in the plate. So she did. She put her last $20 in the plate. She was tr rehearsing what she would say to her children when she got home and tell them like, we don't have any money now. Like, I don't even have money to buy milk and cereal for breakfast tomorrow. But as the choir practice <laughs> ended that night, she... She was getting her coat and about to leave, and the choir director said, kind of just speak to you for a moment. And so he pulled her aside and said, uh, I have something for you. And he came with an envelope stuffed with money that came from the offering that night. He said, you're the person I had in mind. I hope this helps you with your bills. It was an incredible surprise to this lady. And um, when she opened the envelope later, it was more than enough money to cover the bills that she had in arrears and to put groceries on her table for the next time until she was available to get her next paycheck. She stepped out in her storm, you see. She got out of her boat, and she was able to walk on water. Let's keep going. In verse 30, 
So Peter's walking in water. It's going really well. He got out of the boat. He trusted Jesus. The other 11 didn't do that. It's going really well. But oh, wouldn't you know it? The bloom comes off the rose. The first part of verse 30 says, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, some versions say when he saw the wind. Now, of course, you can't see wind. It's invisible, but, but the, you can see the effects of it. When he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. See the problem there? He started out so well. He got out of the boat. He saw Jesus. Jesus beckoned him to come. He followed that. He was able to walk on water, do something he was completely impossible to do, all because his focus was on Jesus. But then, in a moment of panic, as he's walking towards Jesus, a gust of wind, and he kind of turns his head, and, and, and maybe he thought, what am I doing? How am I even able to do this? This is crazy. Maybe he was starting to talk himself out of it. Maybe he even started to turn around and try to head back to the boat. I don't know, but this much I do know. He took his focus off Jesus. Remember we said at the beginning about that phrase, don't lose your focus. Peter lost his focus here. And so when he lost his focus, took his eyes off Jesus, that's when he began to sink. That's the bad news. The good news is the second part of this verse. When he began to sink, he cried out and said, Lord, save me. He took his focus off Jesus, but then he realized it and he quickly called out to God. And you know something? We're all, let's face it, we're all going to lose our focus at times. Some pressure of our job situation. Maybe you've been unemployed now for a number of days, maybe a week or so because of these layoffs. Uh, maybe, you know, the cupboard's getting bare, uh, the news isn't looking any better, maybe you're worried, your focus has gotten off uh, the Lord and His uh, promise to look after you. Um, maybe you're at your wit's end with your children at home and, and, you know, they're, of course, out of their element and out of their regular routine and, um, and a number of things are, are swirling around you and it's causing you to lose your focus. Get back and say, Lord, help me. You know, so we can be honest with ourselves and say, you know, yeah, the storm kind of threw me for a loop. But it's okay. Get back. Get your focus back on Jesus. I like what it says in Psalm 34, verse 6, which David wrote when he was on the run from King Saul, running for his life. He said this in Psalm 34, verse 6, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. David knew where to go. He knew who to turn to in his time of trouble. And you do too. This is not rocket science. We know we can turn to God. We just don't do it. We trust in our own strength. We look to others. Uh, we try to figure this out on our own. And you know something? Those are all dead ends. We need to understand that we need to turn to God in our time of trouble. Thankfully, Peter did that. Yes, Jesus did help him. Um, and, and helped. It says that uh, uh, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? We read that verse earlier from Isaiah 41.10, where Isaiah had said, you know, surely I will help you. Surely I will strengthen you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. I picture the strong arm of Jesus. Remember, he was a carpenter's son, so he was ripped. I, I, I see him extending that strong arm and pulling the sinking Peter up out of the water and back to his feet again, where there they are standing on the water again supernatural defying gravity because he's connected with jesus again he's walking with jesus arm in arm now so the focus is back on jesus and he's returned to that position where he's able to do what he could not possibly have done on his own he's walking on water but jesus expected more out of peter so he's, he kind of chided him there he said oh you of little faith why did you doubt in other words he said if you just kept your focus i mean you know I've, i'm going to come through for you when have i ever let you down why is it that you and i Trust God in those good moments. We're in a church service. We're praising God, how good he is. And, everything. and then as soon as, you know, stuff's, you know, coming at us, like, oh my goodness, I got this bill to pay and I don't know how I'm going to pay. Then it's like, where are you, God? And we start to fa fail and, and, and feign and, and, you know, this type of thing. Why is it that we turn away from God when we need him the most? Jesus expects us to keep our focus on him. He said to Peter, what's the matter with you? Why do you have such little faith? Jesus' last words on earth are recorded for us by this same Matthew in Matthew 28, verse 20. He said on the mountain there, just before he went up to heaven, and uh, we're waiting for his return again. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Always. 
doesn't mean sometimes. It doesn't mean 99.9%. .9%. It means all the time. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Wow, what a great promise. You know, when it says there in um, verse 32, when they, uh, so after he, he, in verse 31, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him and said to him, oh, you have a little faith, why did you doubt? Then verse 32, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. How did they get to the boat? They didn't swim. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Uh, it's not like they sunk again and then they swam and then the, the other 11 had to go and pull them up and, and drag them to the, over the side of the boat. No, they, they walked on the water back to the boat and stepped in from off the water. There's a lesson there. When our focus is back on Jesus, we can continue abiding in this supernatural provision that he gives us. We're in a very difficult and challenging time right now in our world. And we need to be able to continue walking in the supernatural provision that God has provided for us. But we've got to stay connected with God. In order to stay connected with him, we've got to keep our focus on him. You know, it's interesting. The storm eventually stops and those that were in the boat see that it had stopped and look at the response of verse 33 then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him saying truly you are the son of god i'm going to give you another nugget here why you need to walk in faith why you need to take hold of jesus hand why you need to keep your focus on him in your storm because there's other people that may be looking at you who need some shoring up in their faith who need some encouragement who need a hand up to help them to get their focus on jesus there were 11 other men in that boat that did not get out of the boat, that cowered in fear, were flailing around, bailing for their lives, whatever. But they witnessed this whole thing in front of them. And when Jesus and Peter walked on the water back into the boat, the storm immediately subsided. They witnessed it and they worshiped God. So we need to walk by faith because other people need to see us walking by faith. We need to keep our focus on Jesus so that others can get their focus on Jesus. Those 11 men got a great uh, lesson that day. Okay, um, we were cowering in fear here, but we learned something here. Uh, and you have people in your life, I have people in my life that are just cowering in fear. Right now, just where they're at, they're not in their Bible. Maybe they're not even Christian. You know, they don't know enough to call on God. They don't know how they're going to get through this mess. They're terrified. They need to see somebody else who's going through the same storm, but handling it differently. When you and I have our focus on Jesus, we're going to get through the storm and we'll take others with us. I want to give you one more nugget, which is pretty incredible. This oftentimes, if you've heard preaching on this, on this passage, the pastor will often stop at that verse. But actually, there's, there's three more verses at the end of this chapter that Matthew records for us. I think they're very important. So after they got in the boat, the storm has subsided. It's all good. Verse 34, they continue with the journey that Jesus had said they were going to take at the beginning of this passage. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. I want you to understand something. We need to keep our focus on Jesus and walk by faith in order to be available to help others in their need. What if they said, we're swamped, or we can't, we're, we're perishing? They need to get to the other side, because guess what's on the other side? People who need Jesus. And if they don't continue on, if they don't keep their focus on Jesus, they're just going to be tempted to just let's go back to where we came and 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 you know call this mission off people are going to miss out on a visitation of jesus that they desperately need themselves did you catch that they found out that it was jesus they ran all over the place getting as many sick people as they possibly could and said every person they begged him they might touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched it were made perfectly well a bunch of sick people got healed because these men completed their mission. These men completed their mission because they got their focus back on Jesus where it had not been not just a, an hour or so before in this storm. If Let me give you this statement. If we are frozen in fear ourselves, we'll never be able to help others who may be worse off than we are.
I want you to feast on those things today. We need to keep our focus. If you don't get out of the boat, you can't walk on water. Okay, so we need to take some chances. We need to step out in faith knowing that God is there in the midst of our storm. But we need to keep our focus on Jesus in the midst of the storm. The storm might last for a while. Some storms are shorter, some are longer. We need to keep our focus during the duration so that we get through the storm. Jesus has promised to be with us through it all. And then, you know, through it all, there may be other people whose lives are impacted. If you're a, a mom or a dad, you know, um, uh, or, you know, you're, you have people under you at work, uh, extended family, neighbors. There's people that need the hope of Jesus that aren't walking with it right now because just that's where they're at. They're focused on their problems. You need to keep your focus on Jesus. Keep holding on to his hand. Even if you start losing your grip, he won't lose his. Get through this storm because others are watching you and they want to see that this can be done. So I want to encourage you today. You know, the Word of God tells us these great things, and, and they're there for a reason. The, the Scripture uh, is for us to learn from and to abide in and to also take others uh, with us in it. Let's just pray about that. Father, we just thank you for this example of Peter. He did a lot of things right in this passage. We don't want to dump on him too much. He did get out of the boat after all. Uh, yes, he lost his focus uh, momentarily, but God, you were right there for him. You helped him to do what he couldn't possibly have done on his own. Lord, you'll do the same for us too. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and yes, forever. So Lord, we know that as you help Peter through the storm and eventually the other 11 apostles as well, you will help us through our storm too, whatever it is, if it's this pandemic or any other thing that we may be facing today. You will help us through our storms, and we're so thankful for that. Help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're almost ready to close, uh, folks, uh, for another Sunday and another week ahead of us. And I hope it'll be a, a week where you're spending lots of time in God's Word. You're spending time praying, connecting with God, and keeping your focus on Him. Uh, but I want to just offer for those of you who may be watching and maybe you just tuned into us, maybe you just caught us on the internet, maybe someone said, hey, tune into this, and, and maybe you're not someone that's uh, you know, accustomed to going to church that often. Maybe you are a churchgoer, but you're just really unsure of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Do I belong to Jesus? Will, you know, if I die today, would I go to heaven? Maybe those are things that you've thought about. God wants to give us an assurance that uh, we can belong to him. And uh, it's not based on works of righteousness that we've done. It's not based on our works or how good we are or uh, our background, nothing like that. It's completely based upon what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary when he died on the cross for our sins. I want to lead you in a word of prayer today. And if that's you uh, watching this telecast from wherever you are, um, why don't you just uh, bow your head right where you are there and pray with me uh, words like this. Dear Father, thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, to be the savior of the world. But you also sent him to be my savior. I've sinned, and I need a savior to save me. I confess my sins to you, O God. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, would you come into my life and take my sins away and be my Lord and my savior. And I will pledge to follow you from now on, the Holy Spirit being my helper. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope if that was uh, your prayer today that you'll tell someone about it. I'd like to hear from you myself. Um, my, my email address is on our website, um, brian at firstbaptist.ca, 1stbaptist.ca. You can send me an email let me know about it. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd be more than happy to mail you some uh, materials to help you in your newfound relationship with Jesus Christ. But certainly tell someone about it today. That's good news. Christ wants to be uh, living and abiding you and leading you at all times in your life, but certainly through this time of this pandemic. God bless you. Have a great week. I speak blessing over you, and we'll see you again next week. Don't forget we have communion next week. God bless. God bless.